Hello, my soccer universe. To a long overdue look at Serie A, but with an Afghan and an Asian Cup going on, it is what it had to happen. Uh, and I already said that the round that happened around the 20th, 21st of January due to the Super Cup was anyway a truncated one. I'm not going to do a video. And then like, last week, weekend, there was just too much else going on. And so we're now looking at Serie A, basically two and a half rounds, if you would like. And I don't want to go game by game or make hard highlights around. I actually want to talk more like um, big events, a little bit team by team as well. And we have to start this video with the big one. We had a Derby d'Italia, 1v2 Inter against Juve. However, in the run-up to this game, not only did Inter become champions of Saudi Arabia, uh, in the final against Napoli, don't want to really talk about it. It really doesn't matter all that much. Uh, to to me, they also won uh, in uh, Florence with Lautaro Martino getting Martinez getting another big goal. Yes, Nico Gonzalez missed a penalty uh, late in that game to equalize, but the better chances during the entire game were actually falling into sway. So overall, I think it was not that un undeserved that Inter got that win. Contrary to that, uh, Juve took egg actually for a brief time the lead um, in the uh, league table at the table. Uh, yes, with a game uh, more with a 3 0 at Lecce, but then only drew at home uh, against M Empoli. Empoli, that was relegation. Um, it's still relegation threatened. Uh, yes, they had to play thanks to Emily Gretzka for the majority of the game uh, with a man less. And yes, they took the lead through Vlahovic, uh, but it was not meant to be. So going into the third, the third of Italia, Inter already had uh, a lead with a game in hand. And now they have stretched this one to four. Winning over Juve 1 0 and fully deservedly so, um, especially in the first half, they completely dominated Juve. Uh, maybe the only downside uh, for Inter in this one is that the goal came through, it got the own goal. I mean, there was Pavard trying to make a bicycle kick, there, there is portion and the ball falls uh, where Turam and Gar Gar got there and he goes, Well, I got his chest in the internet. So be it. I think no Inter fan will um, really be sad about that. Honestly, the game kicked in the next uh, gear in the second half. Where first, uh, there was a good chance by Charles Nogle hitting the outside of the post. There was uh, three good Juve chances. I mean, in the, in the first half, there was one by Vlahovic uh, that uh, could be chance if he wouldn't have had an awful first touch to actually give Juve the lead, which would have been totally against the run, run of play. But there, yeah, Juve them, there was throwing with probably the best chance falling uh, to Gatti of all, all, all people. Probably an even bigger one was um, thwarted by Mikitarian, who just had the awareness of mind to uh, take it away but there was also then a great chance for Barella to double the lead and Anatovic again he is not the best striker for Inter let's put it that way but Inter are on the way uh, to another win to take the lead on the table the lead at the moment is four points should they win their game in hand which is not a foregone conclusion also has to be said uh, since this is a game against Atalanta at home although Inter against At At Atalanta is probably the one team that Atalanta have not really had a chance to make many points point, point points again but should they win that that one then has seven points clear I think it everything points at the uh, uh, at Inter getting the championship, the basically the Serie A title is presented them on the silver platter already. They just have to accept it more or less. And yes, Juve will probably easily finish in second place, although there's a Milan team creeping up on them. Um, and maybe that's the time now to talk a little bit uh, about Milan, who had a very interesting three rounds. I mean, on the plus side, you have two away wins uh, that were what I call perfect wins. You had a 1-0 lead. 2-1 down, and then you get the 3-2 three, 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 win. I would say, have to say the one at Frosinone uh, past weekend was maybe a little bit more convincing because it was more, a bit more of a fluke that you were 2-1 down. The one against Udine, I, I actually thought that, yeah, uh, that's, that's a tough one. Um, and then you had the home game against Bologna, where you also come back. Uh, you're 1-0 down through a Xerxes goal. Uh, you really then throw everything at Bologna. Uh, you missed two penalties in in between, which 
I mean, that round last weekend with five missed penalties is here. I was in any way a record. I think this hasn't happened since the 60s. But you missed two penalties, Giroud and Theo Hernandez. And what I, I don't get is when Theo Hernandez must, must have seen that this hit the cross at the upright straight. Why is he t- touching that ball a- 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 again to t- tap it in? This is always going to be chalked off. Uh, but on the other side, it's Ruben Loftus-Cheek who makes two goals. You think you still get get, get even a late on. You give up a stupid penalty. I honestly think he needed to make the foul. Um, because uh, otherwise it would have been a t- tapping for, for, for the Bologna striker. Still, it was a little bit a uh, draw that uh, really irked me quite some. Uh, I want to focus on one last thing that happened, Milan, this was happening at the Udine game, where Mike Mignon was really abused, uh, big time, uh, racially abused, and more or less when Milan had a 1-0 lead, uh, he walked off the field. I mean, he told the referee, you know, this is still ha- happening, they're take, take, taking off, off the field, and that time Milan was squarely in control of that game. Um, and he even comes back on is still getting the abuse. I honestly, when he went off, I thought, yeah, if they come, 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 come back on, they, they will get exactly that. Fortunately, humans are not the smartest people out there, especially if you're in a tribalistic soccer sta- stadium, although it has, has been the wood in it for me, never strokes, uh, uh, struck me as a fan, fan, fan base that is, um, uh, prone to racist abuse. Um, but he's still so his ground, especially since he then uh, switched to to the other half. Um, that racist abuse sparked, of course, a whole lot of support. Milan, actually, the players quickly uh, went out there with Mike Mignon. Uh, the, the squad really reacted well there. Um, they also said, yeah, uh, if you don't want, we will abandon the game. They went then out again. Um, and it was a huge controversy see that also you know uh Udine was in the, in the end not very happy with that we have that fan identified and then at the bologna game in the 16th minute mike Minos, uh, not, not number 16 milan halted play uh dimmed the lights showed a quote from martin luther king that darkness um darkness cannot shine the light on darkness only the light can or something to that effect phones were put up in in, in, in there and it actually shows that I really have have said a culture at Milan dealing with this actually is quite good uh, it's very rare there was uh, you know there was not necessarily a finger pointing or something they say this is the action we're gonna take and then we'll make this for Mike Mignon uh, and note uh, attempts like what Bonucci did when uh, or was well, what happened with, with the Inter Ultras, uh, kind of trying to ex- uh, explain why it's happening. They said, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. We respect, as the Milan uh, slogan is. And I think that actually filming with Pride being a Milan fan, although, as I said, the two to draw against Caspolia was a little bit gutting. Uh, for sure. Uh, speaking of Bologna, they had a rough run in January, hadn't, hadn't won a minute ahead of the Milan game. They lost 200 car calorie, but at the weekend they got a big 4-2 uh, comeback winner derby against Sassuolo. Uh, got the winning goals coming late. Uh, South and Salamakers, Milan, Loni also get, getting into So maybe they got a turnaround as well. Uh, turnaround also for Roma. Uh, the last time we talked, uh, Jose Mourinho just had got sacked. And Daniele De Rossi comes in, and he comes in with three wins. It has to be fair. Uh, the wins were against Fior- uh, Verona, not Verona, Salon Salentana away, and now Cagliari at home. So all four bottom of the table, te- uh, three bottom of the table teams. They are they're all among the uh, the bottom four. So it was kind of an easy start, and I think this probably had something to do with getting Mourinho fired exactly at the point. Because if you bring some in, it should it is easing. Uh, the new coach into the new role and that's exactly what happened but I think um, Roma also showed some good stuff in there and suddenly Lorenzo Pellegrini scores in every game uh, since uh, Mourinho has been fired and before that only two and he was a secondary third third player so um, while I think many Roma fans are still sad that Mourinho left because you know he put Roma back on the map if you would like on the other side things uh, maybe looking up for Roma yes they will have now a big one coming up uh, as we'll see um, that will probably test them a, a, a little bit more but you know Daniele De Rossi has a little bit worked them and got them back on track 
for now three wins in in a row Roma now sitting in fifth in the table and they're only a point behind Atalanta and Atalanta that also had three um three wins in in a row two 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 wins since 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 we last talk I mean the two nil against Udine is probably not too much to talk home about but the past weekend it was really emphatic uh 3-1 over Lazio and the Lazio team is also they've definitely trending in the wrong direction uh after I think it was a horrific draw against Napoli but Atalanta, the Catalare assisting one, scoring two, and one, 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 one was a penalty. Now the rumors are that he will be bought from Milan. Yeah, I still find it sad that he couldn't work because he was always a player that I liked. And I always wanted him at Milan, but at the Atalanta, he seems to work better. So I guess it's better for him. And Milan is getting at least a little bit of money, can a little bit recoup the losses that they had from uh, this buy. I don't want I don't want to pull it, put it down to the jersey colors, but you know, Club Rouge plays in uh, black and blue. Atalanta is black, black and blue. He probably feels more comfortable in these colors. It also has to be said. So there you go, but At Atalanta sit now fourth in the table with probably a really good chance of making it into the Champions League. They are currently favored by a model 4 for 2% for over Napoli 25 and Roma for the last spot, although Italy could get a fifth one. Uh, and that might be a hard, hard battle. And I think there's Bologna in there, there's Napoli in there, there's potentially Fiorentina in, the, in there, there's potentially Lazio in there, although the latter two had really rough runs. I mean, Fiorentina have now uh, lost against Inter but the loss to Lecce late on really really hurt hurt her chances and the last win they had was still in the old year one against Torino so uh, Fiorentina on a really really bad spell. Napoli slowly I mean Mazzari say what he want he got two wins now but the two wins similar to Roma it is a 2-1 home against Salernitana with I think a late winner and against Verona you also were 1-0 down and they needed uh, uh, individual effort by Squarescalia to uh, get the winner to salvage Napoli from another disappointing point in loss in between an absolute horrendous 0-0 bit nil uh, at Lazio there was only a single shot on goal not looking good for them as well and it is so damning because you know we thought that La the Napoli should be this great team they were really the team last season it was fun to watch Napoli uh, and now they're taking on an ailing Barcelona and I am telling you right now Barcelona are still the favorites in the add-on because Napoli cannot get the SHIT2 together uh, after this high point combusting day this way is just galling I have to say uh, let's look actually also towards the bottom of the table uh, where we have basically from 15th, uh, 15th place on everyone is in a, in, in a relegation battle. We have Sassuolo, three losses now in a row. Uh, we had them um, before at Juve, then uh, the game has to be played. They lost 1-0 at Monza, 4-2 at Bologna and they cannot get out of there. Uh, Sassuolo was an upper mid-table team over the past two years. Udine relatively well run club but also on a really 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 bad form you know the, the loss for Milan the loss of Atalanta I think those two you can lose the draw against Monza if you want to get out of it you better get there Monza is a relatively stable mid-table team probably better uh, Verona also uh, now with a cup a, a, a cup of losses you know this is a team that almost beat Inter at the San Siro on, only with a really weird uh, refereeing um, we talk about the loss uh, at Roma last uh, now against Na Napoli in between Frosinone. Frosinone is probably safe, Verona not, but the draw didn't really, really help, help them. Calgary also, few losses in a row, I mean, uh, some shoots here and there, but at, at, at the moment Calgary seemed to me uh, really on a downward spiral. Uh, Empoli, a little bit, some hope there, you know, win against Monza, uh, draw at Juve, but they lost Baldanzi, draw a Genoa, a Genoa team. It actually is probably an underreported story because they're doing as a promoter team really, really well sitting comfortably with mid table. And Pippo Inzaghi has his work cut out at Salonetana, and I'm afraid it's not gonna be enough. He's not the miracle worker. Yes, they got a nil nil at uh, Torino, and yes, they lost them to uh, Roma and Na Napoli, which you can do. Maybe the schedule may ease up for them. Uh, by the way, Empoli have, of course, hired Nicola, uh, you know, the escape master of Italian football. So maybe if you ask me if one of these teams 
who could of that I'm the bottom could survive? Probably it's empty at the moment. But we shall see. So yeah, this is it from me from a quick look back. When we come back next round, we have actually rather major games. We have Roma against Inter. Uh, sounds much better than it is at, at, at the moment because I expect Inter to win this relatively easily. But maybe that the Rossi effect, I would love for it to get a little bit more excitement back into Sierra because it seems to be a procession to the title. We have another one between e Milan and Na Napoli with also similar signs that Milan is at the moment a much better team than Napoli, although we have said Napoli is a little bit resurgent, although it was against lesser opposition. Milan, I think if they would get rid of their defensive frailties, that's what's holding them back. I, I, I find to join Inter and Juve up top. Other uh, games, I mean, those two really stick out so much. I wouldn't be surprised if Cardio does something against Lazio, uh, to be honest. Genoa against At Atalanta is a definite um, sleeper game in this round. So yeah, let me know how you, you uh, saw the last few weeks in Serie A. Please give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed, enjoyed this video, drop a comment below and I will soon talk to you more about things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!